Today, we are going to be talking about our digestive tract, specifically our intestines, and even more specifically, our symbiosis with the trillions of microorganisms that live there. The microbiome that exists in our gut is collectively called intestinal microbiota. These organisms make life as we know it possible. Eating and digesting would not be possible without them, and that means that we would be unable to grow or develop properly either. These microbiota are so crucial to our functioning because they are a part of not only energy collection and storage, but also absorbing carbohydrates. This absorption of carbs is what is believed to be what established the beginning of a symbiosis between intestines and the bacteria. Perhaps even more important than helping us digest food, the microbiota also influences the immune system. It encourages mature and normal immune function. Even though microbiota give the same benefits to everyone, our intestines can have a very different composition of bacteria. However, there seem to be three major categories that a gut might fall under. These categories are based on the dominant microbe present. The variability of the microbiota leads to differences in immune function and has even been shown to have a relationship to obesity and the kinds of foods eaten. There is, however, the possibility to alter your microbiota's composition. Many studies have shown that changing your diet drastically, such as high fat and sugar content to a low fat plant-based diet can alter the microbiome. A couple studies even reported that with a drastic dietary change, there can be a noticeable difference in microbe diversity within one day. Let's look specifically at some studies that demonstrate the role intestinal microbiota play in keeping us healthy. In a 2016 experiment at the University of Lyon and the Institute of Microbiology of the Czech Academy of Sciences, human gut microbes were placed into mice in order to learn more about how to alleviate malnutrition in children. Specifically, this experiment looks to understand why diet and nutrition alone are not always sufficient in fixing malnutrition. The study found that the microbiota from healthy children, when put into the mice, allowed for normal growth even when the mice were undernourished as infants. However, when the mice were given only microbiota for malnourished children, their growth was irregular and stunted. Even when undernourished, a healthy intestinal microbiota can promote juvenile growth. This was shown in the fruit fly species Drosophila melangaster. This suggests that a healthy microbe can help alleviate the effects from even malnourishment. Parts of this experiment even suggest that particular bacteria strains can be the cornerstone of this whole theory. This means that certain types of microbes are what specifically drives the growth in situations of malnutrition. One or two specific bacteria per person could be responsible for this amazing ability to promote growth even without proper nutrition. This experiment's results suggest that the intestinal microbiota is essential to normal growth and development. The second experiment performed on mice discovered that the intestinal microbiota regulated the production of amino acid in the host and glutathione metabolism better in the mice that were conventionally raised versus the germ-free mice. That is, mice which have been selectively colonized in order to be sterile. For starters, the human gut harbors these intestinal microbiota that strongly influence the physiology of the host. An imbalance of the microbial composition in the gut can cause diseases such as obesity or type 2 diabetes. The experimenters wanted to test exactly what the contributions were of specific microbial populations on the progression of these diseases. To do this, they looked at the responses along the length of the gut in both conventionally raised mice and germ-free mice. The liver and white adipose tissue of the two types of mice were analyzed to examine the microbiota-induced transcriptional responses of the host metabolism. By examining how well the different organs in the mice were able to metabolize the food proved a positive effect on the host by the intestinal microbiota. They found that the levels of amino acids and lipid metabolism were increased in the conventionally raised mice versus the germ-free mice, proving that these intestinal microbiota are major regulators of metabolisms in mammals. A review of findings done at California Institute of Technology analyzed many experiments involving immune systems and intestinal microbiota. A series of experiments on germ-free mice have revealed that the microorganisms in the intestinal tract may be more closely intertwined with the immune system than previously thought. The symbiotic host bacterial relationship has resulted in proper immune function regulation, provision of essential nutrients, metabolism of ingestible compounds, defense against pathogen colonization, and help in developing intestinal architecture. 
In germ-free mice, there are significant deficits in the development of intestinal tissues and other structures which often develop following the introduction of gut bacteria. Not only that, but there are extensive deficits in antibody production, impaired development and maturation of isolated lymphoid follicles, and morphological tissue defects in the intestines. For example, intestinal epithelial cells showed altered patterns of microvilli formation and decreased rates of cell turnover. Antibiotic treatment of animals in attempts to eliminate gut bacteria has resulted in increased susceptibility to infection by parasites. Another study was conducted which compared the microbiota of those who suffered from inflammatory bowel disease and those who did not. The results showed a statistically significant difference between the microbial compositions of the two controls. The IBD-specific microbiota displayed reduction in the levels of two phyla of bacteria, the firmicutes and the bacteriodets, both of which were prominently represented in the non-IBD controls. In conclusion, the presence and removal of intestinal bacteria affects the functions of the immune system and how our body fights disease. All of these studies show how the symbiosis we have with intestinal microbiota is not only extremely beneficial, but is crucial to normal growth and development. Their involvement in our immune functions, metabolism, and nourishment affect how our body functions. Even though there can be a wide variety of diversity of the microbes in our digestive tract, each one of us receives the benefit of having them. Some microbes seem to give more benefits than others, and unlocking this mystery might help solve complications of malnutrition and obesity. Understanding more about how intestinal microbiota affect our immune system will help us not only understand our own immune system more, but also our digestive system. Learning more about what influences the composition of our intestinal microbiota will also help us handle malnutrition and obesity-related issues more efficiently. One study shows that how one is born, via C-section or vaginally, has an effect on your intestinal microbiota and therefore can influence how well your immune system fights off certain illnesses. Many studies indicate certain kinds of bacteria that can be correlated to being more abundant in healthier individuals. Knowing which bacteria and why could change how some illness complications are treated. More research like this can give us even more insight into how our body functions and how we should care for it. Understanding our intestinal microbiota is significant to how we take medical approaches to treating illnesses.